small miniature people dancing on your desk how many is too many the answer is there could never be enough in this tutorial we're going to learn how we can have small little tiny people doing wicked cool dances on our table stay tuned here we go so the first thing you're going to want to do before jumping into this is record your video so i've basically recorded this uh half a minute long mp4 i've set it up to record my desk and i've got a video playing in the background if you don't have some background movement then it's just going to look like a still image which is fine too but uh, i think it's a little bit cooler to actually use a video uh okay so once you've recorded your video we're going to jump back into cinema 4d and we want to load our video into a material so create a new material and open it up we can create we can call this background video turn off reflectance and in our color channel we're going to load up the video click no to that and we need to create a background object to apply our video to so apply our material to our background object there okay so if we hit play the video is not going to play at all it's just going to look like a still image so to fix that open up the background video material and go into editor click on the anime preview tick box and now we can try it again and now we can see that our video is playing inside in the cinema 40 viewport so next we want to increase our frame range because this video is going to be way longer than 90 frames so to do that we can type in a number now this isn't a random number this is the length of our animation that we're going to be importing in a minute so i'm just going to hit enter there and double click here so next we want to import our character our dancing guy so i'm not sure if you're aware of this website it's called mixamo.com and here you're able to download characters with motion capture data attached to them so you can choose any one you fancy at all so i'm going for this guy because he's pretty cool i'm going to click download there and that's going to download away so once our character has downloaded we want to import it into our cinema 4d scene so go to file merge and find where you have saved your motion capture data so i've saved the mine here and double click to open that there click ok uh, you don't want to reassign included tasks takes so click no and there he is so as you can see he's up on top of the keyboard we don't want him there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pause that for a second i'm going to use alt and middle mouse click to pan the camera so that our guy appears to be on the table now most of you might be using one two and three in cinema 40 to change the view of the viewport one to pan two to zoom in and out and three to rotate but i like to use alt for all of them so hold down alt use your middle mouse click to pan use your while holding down alt again you can use your left click to rotate and you can use your right click to zoom in and out so what we want to do is zoom to a level that gives our character the appearance of being relatively small now this depends on yourself you might want him to be really big in that case zoom right into him but I want my guy to be about this size. I'm going to zoom out to about this level. And I'm going to use pan to bring him to the starting to the position I want him to be in when the video starts. So I'm just going to rewind and do that. So I want him to be about here. 
and rotate the camera so that he looks like actually looks like he's standing on the table. You can use the grid here for a reference. So obviously you don't want him like this. You want him kind of like this. You can just eyeball it to get him in the position that makes him look like he's actually standing on the table. So once you're happy enough with his position, you can just scroll through your animation. Now, remember, I set my animation frame range to 517 frames. If you've downloaded the same character as me, uh, the same motion capture data, then 517 frames is all you're going to need. But if you've downloaded a different character with different motion capture data, you're going to have to check how many frames is in that animation. So press Shift F3 on your keyboard, hold down Alt and use your right click to zoom out and then you're going to be able to see exactly how many frames are in the animation that you've downloaded. So as you can see my one is 517 frames long. Okay so let's have a look at this guy doing his thing. He's dancing on the table, not a care in the world. Okay so when he moonwalks back the way like that I want him to be a little bit closer to the keyboard so I'm going to pan pan the camera back a bit and I'm just going to fix it up so that he's nice and close to the keyboard and the reason for that is I want to have a shadow that's going to cast and it's going to travel along the floor or the table we'll say and it's going to go up along the keyboard here we're going to go back to that in a minute so that's looking pretty good so next we want to create a floor so click on the floor object and we want the floor to share the same material as our background so hold control uh, to copy and drag that up to our floor now let's hit render to see what that looks like so as you can see our floor horizon is visible here and it's a different color to our background. So we want our floor to blend in nicely with our background. So to set that up, right click on floor, go to Cinema 4D Tags, go to Compositing, and tick the Compositing Background tick box. Now if we render that again, you can see that our floor is blended in nicely with our background. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna set up a light and I want to bring this light over here and I want to bring it up here along the y-axis and let's see what that looks like when it's rendered so I'm going to turn on shadows so go into your light go into your shadow tab and we're going to go for shadow maps soft because that's going to give us an effect closest to this shadow which is being cast by our mouse by the mouse which was actually in the video so we're going to use this shadow as a reference we're going to try and match up our our shadow as closely as possible to this shadow so let's see what that looks like again okay so that's looking pretty good now what I want to do is I want my shadow to tr to point in this direction and the reason for that is because when I recorded this video, I had a light sitting on my desk that was just at the front of the desk and it was high up and it was pointing down. So if there was really a guy here, the shadow would be going in around this direction. So I'm just going to close that video now. And I am going to middle mouse click in our perspective view and I'm going to go to our top view and scroll out okay so I'm just gonna what I want to do is I want to bring our light let's open up our interactive render viewer so we can do this a lot quicker bring up the render quality just a little bit and let's start moving our light around seeing okay so now our shadows change direction 
and I am happy enough with the direction of that shadow just the way it is and I want to bring the light up just a little bit more to reduce the length of the shadow okay that's looking pretty good so I'm turn off my interactive render viewer and I am going to render this now we want to increase the shadow map resolution so that's going to look way better we're going to bring it up to about 1500 by 1500 let's render that again as you can see it's a lot crisper next we want to basically add some reflection to our character's skin and once we've done that you're going to see that the table that he's dancing on is actually reflecting on his skin and it's going to look even more realistic so open up our character's skin material and go to reflectance and we're going to add in a cgx and we're going to open up our interactive render viewer again to see what that looks like okay so now you can see that the table is reflecting on his legs and it's looking pretty cool now next we want i'm just going to bring up the render quality here we want to create another light because you've got a light coming from the right you're also going to have light coming from the left it's going to be coming from somewhere if there's not already a light over here it's going to be bouncing back so we're going to create another light and we're going to bring it over here and that's already looking way better i want to bring but down the reflectance of our character the the brightness i should say in our reflectance channel i'm going to bring it down to about 90 and also i am going to create a sky and i am going to create a cinema 40 tag come tag and i'm going to tell the camera i'm going to tell the camera not to see this sky so you can do that by unchecking this box here now i want to add our background video material to our sky and you're going to get a better effect on the reflection basically when you create a sky it creates an infinite sphere around your scene and by adding on your video background texture you're going to get you're going to get your environment being reflected by any reflective material you have in your scene so let's uh, play that now so as you can see the shadow is traveling along the table but it doesn't seem to travel along the keyboard because cinema 4d doesn't know the keyboard's there so what we're going to do is we're going to create a primitive object that's going to act as our keyboard we're going to select cylinder we're going to change the orientation to minus x and rotate that you can just eyeball it so it's about at the same angle as the keyboard or whatever object you're trying to match up to i'm going to bring it back here and I'm going to use this circle here to increase the height of the cylinder. Okay, so I'm just going to get it to around there. And now you can see our shadow is traveling along the, the table and up along the keyboard. Well, it's up along the cylinder. So to make this cylinder invisible, we're going to copy our background video material onto our cylinder. So now that our cylinder is invisible, but we can still see that it's not blended in with our background so we're going to use the same method we did with our floor we're going to copy our compositing tag up to our cylinder object and this has the compositing background tick box ticked so hold control and bring that up so now it's blended in nicely with our background but as you can see it's casting a bit of a shadow here so we want to turn off cast shadows there and now that's no longer uh, casting shadows okay so that's starting to look a bit better we need to bring back our cylinder because as you can see it's not in the same it's not aligned with our keyboard so we're going to bring that back 
on the Z axis. So that's looking much better now. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into my light for one second and I want to see if I can make this a little more blurred on the edges by increasing the sample radius. So that's looking a bit better. And I also want to use the eyedropper tool and pop it over this shadow here and just click. Just to make sure I'm getting the same color as this shadow, and I am. So it hasn't changed at all, and that is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna turn off my interactive render viewer and I'm gonna play this out. And I'm gonna just render a few frames just to make sure that I'm happy with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn on, I'm gonna go into my render settings and I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion for some contact shadows. Okay, so we got our contact shadows there now. and. The floor could be a little bit closer to our character's feet. So middle mouse click in perspective view, go into any either right or front view and zoom in there with your mouse scroller. Um, select your floor and bring it up even closer to his feet. Middle mouse click again, open up your perspective view with the middle mouse click and let's hit render there to see what that looks like. So that's looking way better. Next, I want to turn on global illumination so that the light's gonna be able to bounce around for a more realistic uh, look. So I'm going to go to effect in our render settings and add global illumination. Now let's render this. It's gonna take render of course, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so I am happy with that. So we can now set this up for render. So we need to first save the file. So file, save as, and I'm gonna go here to save it out as table dancer. And in the render settings, you're gonna wanna go to output, set this to 1920 by 1080 and we want to render all frames so that's going to go from 0 to 517. Um, another thing that we have forgotten to do is to turn on anti-aliasing. Now the reason we want to do that is I will show you now in two seconds when this renders out. So Okay, so it's not very visible actually, so we might get away with not turning it on, but if you're getting some jagged reflections, like let's actually turn on our interactive render viewer now and see if we get much of a difference. So I'm gonna turn off global illumination. Hopefully I remember to turn it back on just so we'll get a quicker result. Uh, so if I go to anti-aliasing and go to best, so, you can see that the reflections are a lot better now straight away. So yeah, we definitely want to turn that on. I thought I might get away with not turning it on because our character is so small, but yeah, it makes a big difference. So let's just see that again. If we go to none, we got jagged rough reflections. If we turn that to best, we have nice smooth reflections. Let's see if we can reduce the max level to two by two anything that will help reduce render time is a plus. So the difference there is minimal. So I'm gonna leave it at two by two and that's uh, gonna decrease render time overall. So I'm gonna turn off this interactive render viewer again and we'll continue on with our render settings. So we are going to select a destination for this. First, I want to set the format to MP4 and I am going to set the destination to table dancers. I'm gonna call it table dancers. Okay, 
and that is it oh yes and we want to make sure that we remember to turn on our global illumination again and okay so that's ready to go control s to save and go to render queue click here again hold down your left mouse click to go to add to render queue and click on start render and that's it that's going to render away and when it's finished you're going to be left with a really cool mp4 that you're going to be able to show off to all your friends and that concludes the video guys hope you learned a lot see you in the next one